Could a bill aimed to stop sex trafficking lead to internet censorship? The Allow States and Victims to Fight Online Sex Trafficking Act, or FOSTA, as it's better known, was drafted to stop the heinous crime of trafficking people, especially children, for sex. But the bill has met a great deal of controversy, mainly from tech and internet experts, who warn the bill might erode core internet freedoms. So how does a bill that aims to fight sex trafficking supposedly threaten the internet that we know today? Let's break it down. FOSTA is a hybrid bill, which includes key provisions of the Stop Enabling Sex Traffickers Act, better known as SESTA. This combination bill amends Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act, which went into effect in 1996, and protects internet companies from being liable for the content its users post online. A CDA 230 is basically the most important internet law you've never heard of. It's not a complete shield from criminal prosecution. If a website itself is doing something that's really problematic, breaking the law itself, they can absolutely be held responsible for that. This means only you can be responsible if you post a defamatory Facebook status, not Facebook. So what's the impetus behind changing the most important internet law? It goes back to a case against Backpage.com, a classified ads website. According to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, most cases of child sex trafficking involved ads on Backpage. Now this is abhorrent stuff, especially since there was evidence that Backpage knew about the activity on its website. But after a series of legal battles, the First Circuit ruled that Backpage was exempt from liability because of CDA 230. Now the Senate bill would make the federal sex trafficking law exempt from parts of CDA 230, which means a website would be held liable if it has the intention to engage in a trafficking venture or if they knowingly assist, support, or facilitate a trafficking venture. It's this language that has some tech companies nervous, especially when it comes to the definition of knowledge of content on a website. Basically, internet companies that host user-generated content are worried that they could be held liable for content on their websites too easily, which could lead to two polar different reactions. If liability requires some sort of knowledge or some sort of intent, then if they don't do any moderation, they avoid that. So, you know, that, that is kind of a, an unfortunate incentive for them. Or it could be the opposite, where websites overcompensate and overfilter their content in order to stay on the right side of the law. In the former case, experts warn we might end up with what is called a cyber cesspool, which is reminiscent of early internet days. Charles told me this potentially includes an increase in revenge porn, cyberbullying, deepfake porn, etc. In the latter case of over-moderating comments, another group might be threatened, and that's adults who enter the sex trade consensually. Kate Diadimo, a long-term sex worker's rights advocate, explained to me why online communities are integral in keeping sex workers safe and how FOSTA SESTA might threaten that. And so access to that harm reduction information is often shared and hosted online. Um, things like bad date lists where you can report that uh, you've had a negative encounter with a client or a law enforcement officer and, and put down that information so that folks can search that information before they see someone um, is, is a really basic way of, you know, utilizing the Internet for harm reduction tools. The concern here is that if websites overcompensate, they would obliterate these online spaces that sex workers use to keep safe. However, it's important to note that there is a safe harbor in CDA 230 that is not being amended. It basically says that if websites are in good faith filtering their content, they can't be liable. But critics say that smaller websites might not want to press their luck with the safe harbor because it hasn't been put to a sufficient legal test and remains ambiguous. Supporters of the bill think these critiques are overblown and alarmist at best. Bill, to them, is a necessity. And Mary Mazio, a former lawyer and director of I Am Jane Doe, a documentary about victims of online sex trafficking, told me that the standards of liability with FOSTA and SESTA are still pretty hard to meet. Um, it clarifies that if you're the website itself and you are involved in the crime of sex trafficking, you, you don't automatically go to jail. You don't automatically pay a fine. All it does is it allows the children or the victim under the Trafficking Act to simply ask the question, are you involved? Are you culpable? FOSTA was passed by the House on February 27th with overwhelming support. Currently, the bill is supported by a host of anti-sex trafficking advocate groups, the Internet Association, which includes tech giants like Facebook and Google, and the majority of lawmakers in D.C. Its list of detractors is just as long and includes sex worker advocacy groups, smaller internet companies like Wikimedia, the ACLU, and the Transgender Center for Equality, just to name a few. 
With all that, it's expected to be passed in the Senate since the bill has such strong bipartisan support. So there's a good chance we'll see how it plays out very soon.